Hey, welcome to the Eddie Hyde Podcast. I am your host and teacher, Eddie Hyde, and I'm so glad you joined me again today. Uh, as we continue talking, I want to uh, talk a little bit more about Donald Trump and how the church, how Christians should respond. When I when I use the word church, I'm not talking about an organization or an institution. I'm talking about the people of God. You are the church. You are a vital part of the church. It's the people that make up the church, not a building, uh, not an institution, not an organization, but the people. And so how should the people respond to the election of Donald Trump? Now, I voted for Donald Trump. I voted for him in 2016. I voted for him in 2020. I voted for him this year. And uh, as you know, I believe that he was God's choice. I believe God raised him up for that position. However, we must be very careful. The church must be very careful, especially those uh, evangelical Christians who are they would call themselves uh, mega followers of Trump and so on, who are so full of euphoria and so on. We must be careful that we do not put our trust in Donald Trump. We must never put our trust in a politician. Only Jesus can save America. And this is the danger right now for, for, for much of the evangelical church in America, that we would become spiritual lackadaisical and um, get into a, a, a certain spiritual stupor, uh, uh, maybe even subconsciously thinking, well, well now everything's going to be okay. Donald Trump's going to work everything out. Yes, Donald Trump is where he's supposed to be, but he is not the Savior. Only Jesus can save America. I was talking to an individual uh, just uh, a few days ago, and, and he, he gave an expression. He, too, was, was pro-Trump, had voted for Trump, but this is how he expressed it. He was talking about how American culture, uh, the, the anti-Christian rhetoric that we hear, like like so many in the Democrat Party, both in Congress and, um, and and in the media, attacking Mike Johnson simply because he described himself as a Bible-believing Christian. And he was accused of being a threat to democracy, a right-wing extremist, and compared to the Taliban and the mullahs of Iran. And, uh, and, see, and that's the culture that has come into America. And, and just with all of the the radical LGBTQ agenda and transgenderism that is being promoted and, and, and lives being destroyed. So anyway, the way this, this person described it was the, the um, America, the American culture was like rushing towards a cliff, going over a precipice. And he said, Donald Trump will tap the brakes to slow it down. And then we agreed, yes, but only an awakened church with its eyes on Jesus can stop America's plunge going over the precipice of cultural, a total cultural collapse. And so, so yes, thank God for Donald Trump, but my friends, our eyes must be upon Jesus. Only Jesus can save America from, from, from cultural suicide, from cultural destruction, and a loss of our Christian culture. And that is true also in Canada, Ireland, and so much of the Western world. There must be a great turning back to God, back to Jesus. Thank God that God is answering prayer and raising up women and men uh, of uh, of common sense and of righteousness and who, who have at least somewhat of a Christian worldview and are favorable towards Christians, thank God that God is raising them up. However, we as believers must never put our trust in politicians or political party. We must encourage and affirm uh, those that God raises up. We must pray for them. Always remember, they are flawed fallible human beings. Donald Trump is a flawed, fallible human being. He subject to, to, to wrongdoing and mistakes. He needs our prayers. 
and our trust must always be in Jesus. And we must continue to pray for boldness for the for Christians. I love the prayer in Acts chapter 4. Uh, when they met together after being threatened by the authorities and ordered not to speak and preach in the name of Jesus, the, the believers gathered together in Acts chapter 4 and they prayed. They acknowledged the greatness of God, the sovereign power of God. They acknowledged his promises. And then they prayed and said, Lord, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. In other words, don't let us be intimidated. Too much of the church today has been intimidated by the loud voices of the, of the anti-Christian element in America. Too many churches have, have been intimidated and have tried to accommodate them. Oh, we are never to be arrogant and ugly and, and, and hateful. We're always to show love and compassion. And, and, and when I say love, I am not talking about some kind of uh, warm, sweet <laughs> feeling. Jesus didn't, Jesus, God does not have warm, sweet feelings towards everybody. He loves everyone in the sense that his intentions toward everyone is for good. He wants everyone to be saved. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. His intentions are good. But does he have uh, uh, warm, sweet, fuzzy feelings. No, of course not he doesn't. No, absolutely not. Uh, look at Jesus. Jesus was the ultimate revelation of God. Jesus got very angry at people at different times and used some very strong language, call, calling them hypocrites and calling them snakes and vipers and, and saying, how shall you escape? Uh, how shall you escape the, the condemnation of hell? And uh, so, so his intentions towards everyone is for good. He wants everyone to be saved. And so our intentions towards everyone is for good. And we need to express that and show that, that we want the best for everyone. But we do not compromise. We do not allow ourselves to be intimidated uh, by those who have rejected the Bible, who have rejected the morals of Jesus and the New Testament, we do not try to accommodate them by compromising and accepting their views. No, we stand strong in God's word. We show that we truly care about them by telling them the truth. We love them enough to tell them the truth. And so we have to do that. The politicians are not going to do that. Remember the politicians, they are about getting votes and gaining power. And so uh, they're, they are going to do a lot of accommodation and, uh, and even compromise in order to get enough votes to maintain power. But, but see, we as Christians... We're not in a popularity contest. We're not trying to get votes. We are here representing the Lord Jesus Christ, the God's chosen Messiah, God's chosen ruler for the universe. We are here representing him in our respective nations, wherever you may be listening. If you're in Pakistan, if you're in Malaysia, if you're in Ireland, if you're in Canada, if you're in India, yes, you are there representing Jesus is destined to rule your nation. He is God's chosen Messiah to rule the earth. And you see, we are here representing him, but we're not compromising and accommodating to try to get people's votes to accept Jesus. No, no, we are proclaiming who he is. And we're saying, you need to come over to his side. You need to be on his side. He's not going to come over and be on your side, which reminds me, let me just share this uh, in closing, reminds me of uh, during the Civil War, horrible Civil War in America, Abraham Lincoln was the president. He was a, he was a man of prayer. He, everything I know about him is a godly man. He, he didn't go to church, but he prayed. He read his Bible. <laughs> My friends, church can't save you. Thank God for church. Thank God for churches. Thank God for being together. That doesn't save you. 
I believe... I believe Abraham was truly a saved man. He believed the Bible. He believed in Jesus Christ. Anyway, it was during the Civil War, and he was talking to uh, a northern minister. It was between the north and the south. And this northern minister said, and, 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 and tens of thousands of people dying on American soil, hundreds of thousands, in fact. And this northern minister said to President Lincoln, I sure hope the Lord is on our side. And Abraham Lincoln replied, I am not at all concerned about that. He said, but my great concern uh, for this nation, for myself, and for this nation is that we will always be on the Lord's side. <laughs> well, I'm not concerned about the question, is the Lord on our side? He said, the question I'm concerned about is, are we on his side? So my friends, no. No, we're not, we're not compromising and making accommodations to try to get people uh, to try to get to, to, to try to convince people that the Lord is on their side and he's for their agenda. No, we are convincing them that they've got to come over and make sure that they are on his side and align themselves with the Messiah King, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is destined to rule the earth. I'll close with a little song uh, here, but let me just, I'll close you with, with the, the, the song and a passage of scripture. I think I will read the, the passage of scripture. I think I'll read it from Isaiah and it's, uh, I'm sorry, not Isaiah, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And it says this, it says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm reading from the NIV. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters. So I would say that therefore, brothers and sisters, based on what I've just said to you. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. I'm going to share a little song with you here. We often sing, well, turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face and the things of Will grow strangely in the light of his glory and grace. You want to sing it with me? Yes, turn, turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full. It is a wonder. And the things on earth will be strangely in the light of his glory and faith. Yes, the things on earth. Will be strange in the light of his glory and dreams. Check out my website, eddiehyatt.com, and I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you.